She recognizes the gentlewoman from Washington, Ms. Jayapal, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you both for your service. Um, thank you to the men and women at the FBI and the department. We deeply appreciate it. And I want to just start by registering my, uh, I was trying to find the right word. I had confusion here. That, that wasn't quite, r quite right. Then I had disgust. Then I put outrage. Now I'm just going to say dissent and displeasure that we are having a sham emergency hearing on this topic when we already held an all-day hearing with the Oversight Committee just last week when Peter Strzok was de deposed for 11 hours in a closed session where we discussed this in the context of the Meadows uh, resolution of inquiry on Tuesday at markup and then again on the floor. Um, and I can only conclude that the only emergency really that requires the chairman to break committee rules and schedule a hearing at the last minute appears to be the majority's deep fear of the truth. The truth of what the special counsel Mueller's investigation is yielding and will yield around the Trump campaign's collusion with a foreign government and other related matters. That has been the emergency that frankly has transformed a committee that I was so excited to be on because it is a powerful committee. The Judiciary Committee is a powerful committee with independent jurisdiction and the profound responsibility to hold our democracy to its highest ideals. And that has been transformed into a committee, in my opinion, with a singular political partisan focus and what I can only describe as a naked fervor to spend all its time in service to individuals, including a president, who continues to show extreme disregard for the very institutions that Republicans used to defend all the time and Democrats actually used to criticize, the institutions of democracy, the FBI, the Department of Justice, the media, the courts. Uh, the chairman mentioned this, this story is like a novel. What came to my mind is The Handmaid's Tale, perhaps. Um, a tale that leads up to the rights of citizens, the status of women, the pillars of justice and democracy being destroyed in service to authoritarian power. The real emergency in my mind that we have not had a hearing on is the urgent humanitarian crisis occurring in our country, at our border, and in cities across the country that really does demand our immediate attention as our government risks the long-term health well-being of thousands of young children who have been cruelly separated from their parents, who have been put into cages, cages, on United States soil, while their parents, who are, by the way, guaranteed the right to seek asylum in this country, guaranteed that right by our signatory to the International Convention of Refugees and by our own due process laws, that they have been imprisoned. That's the emergency that we have. And so I would like to start my questioning by asking uh, Deputy Attorney uh, General Rosenstein, are you aware of the letter written by 72 bipartisan former U.S. attorneys who wrote to Attorney General Sessions to end the, and these, this is their quote, tragic and unsustainable, end of quote, family separations saying that they were, again, their word, in quotes, horrified by the policy. Are you aware of that letter? I believe Attorney I read General? about the letter. I don't think I actually read the letter itself. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to enter that letter into the record. That objection be made a part of the record. Thank you. Attorney General Rosenstein, are you aware that the spike in the number of migrant children in U.S. custody today has gone to over 10,000 children in detention centers? No, I'm not aware of the number in detention centers. I don't think that that may include uh, children who've come across on their own without It parents, does. But I'm not aware of the number in detention centers. And are you aware that overall over 2,700 children have been separated from their parents, including children as young as six months old? I, I do not know that for a fact, Congresswoman. I'll accept your representation. Thank you, Attorney General. I, I actually went to visit women in a prison. They're being held in a federal prison. I'm not exaggerating when I say they're, they're being imprisoned. Asylum seekers who are being imprisoned, mothers who told me their children have been stripped from them, one as young as one year old. And Attorney General, I don't believe that um, the, the administration knows even where these children are, who they belong to. Congressman, I appreciate you raising that. Uh, I, I met just the other day with Secretary Azar 
Uh, and he was quite emphatic. That is a false story. The HHS uh, does know exactly where every one of those children Attorney General, is. let me just stop you for one second to tell you of my personal experience, and I was surrounded by the warden of the prison, as well as a number of employees who can clarify, who can co corroborate exactly what I'm saying to you. A woman gave me a slip of paper that was given to her, either by ICE or HHS, I'm not, I'm not sure who gave it to her. It had her name, her A number, her supposed children, except they weren't her children. They were not her children. Please do not believe when somebody tells you that they know where these children are, unless you can tell me in 10 days that they are actually going to be reunited with their parents. This is happening on U.S. soil. And I have been very disturbed to hear of some of the other consequences on the J Justice Department's ability to prosecute serious crimes due to this zero tolerance, zero humanity prosecution policy. A USA Today article said that the an time email- The gentlewoman has expired. An email was obtained from a Justice Department supervisor. I will turn it over to you, and I would love to hear what is happening to prosecution of drug smuggling cases, because prosecutors are being taken away to prosecute these individuals who are coming across seeking asylum. Congressman, I'd be very interested in that, uh, and I would be shocked if it were true that a drug smuggling case was dropped because of an immigration case, but I'll be happy to look into it. Thank you. I appreciate that.